Fact. The brand's been only last a week. Fact. Along with Rollins, Raw also got rid of the amazing Skillet theme song. Fact. A brand new episode of Kimmy St Talk Wrestling is starting right now. <laughs> So yes, the brand split really did only last a week. I know we're all shocked by this, meaning that the brand split usually only lasts a month. But we're going to talk about all that on our brand new episode of Kimmy Talks Wrestling. So let's get started. So Raw starts out with Alexa Bliss saying, let him in. So The Fiend comes out and Retribution comes to beat up The Fiend, but Alexa Bliss and The Fiend just totally disappear. And out comes the Hurt Business. And Retribution lost in their debut. What? Okay. You have literally built this team up as like the dominant thing that takes over and causes so much chaos as we hear from Ali coming later on that night. But they lose in their debut. WWE, what are you doing? It literally made no sense. And what also didn't make sense, well, it kind of did, but kind of didn't, because if you saw on Twitter, The Fiend and Alexa and all the members of Retribution were fighting back and forth, but then The Fiend comes out and beats up Retribution, and her business just watches. So, you're now going to have them get destroyed by The Fiend. So you are already burying Retribution before they have a chance. WWE, what, what are you doing? But, some good stuff happened next. AJ comes out with Jordan, who was the big ninja with Zawa. He was also the Raw Underground security guard. And he said that he's ready to come for Raw, you know, after his win in the triple threat match between Hardy and Rollins last week. He's ready to prove himself. And Riddle comes out, and he's, you know, with going to be Matt Riddle versus AJ Styles. And Jordan refuses to get out of the ring. And the ref is, like, pleading and begging, like, please move, move, move. We need to start the match. And he finally leaves, and AJ wins. This was a really good match. I don't know what they're going to do with Riddle right off the bat. I don't know if they're going to continue kind of this AJ-Riddle feud, or are they going to move on to something else. But I'm really excited to see what they do next for AJ. I would love it if they maybe put AJ into that United States Championship picture with Lashley. I think that's the next step for the Hurt Business, because as of right now, they're really not doing anything. And that's the next step for Lashley, so that's something I'd really like to see. Of course, after the whole Randy and Drew thing, I would love to see him and Drew for the title, but this was a really, this was a good match. It was easy, it was simple, no mistakes. Love it. Drew then has an interview with Charlie Caruso, and he's like, Charlie, move. I want to I wanna address Randy, like, face to face. And he says that this Sunday, he's ready to deliver hell to Orton. He's been through so much hell and more than Orton has ever in his life, and he's ready to prove that. And yeah, you might have more experience in the Hell in Cell than me because you've been in seven matches and I've only been in one, or zero rather, in my first ones on Sunday. But that doesn't matter because I'm focused, I'm ready, and I'm going to beat you. And when we get to the last, like, we're going to talk about this more. But if Randy does not win, what was the point of building him up since March? I'll leave it at that for right now. The women championship match lasted two months. And then things just got confusing. So it was on an Asuka, and of course, like Asuka wins, like whoop de doo, big shock there. So now Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax come out, and for the fifth week in a row, Lana gets put to a table. So now they're cutting a promo saying, look, like even though we're not best friends, we don't follow each other on Instagram, and like we don't have coordinating gear, we're, we did teamwork, like that's what we do, and that's why we're, we are the women's tag team champions. No one can beat us, no matter what, because we're so dominant, and like yada yada, whatever. So the first, and so they make like an open challenge, but not an open challenge. So the first people that come out are Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. Okay, makes sense. Then, Lacey Evans and Peyton Royce, creative. You just broke up Peyton from the Iconics, for no reason. And you're gonna put her for a singles push, I might add. And you're gonna put her in a tag team with Lacey Evans? Why? That makes no sense. And then the Riot Squad, who are on SmackDown, I might add, interrupt too! First of all, okay. It has not even been a week. Literally, the final night of the Raw was 
well now eight days ago. What? How did you, how did it already get ruined? Then not not even the first time to not, like last night it got ruined. Oh my god. Hello, if you do not have something to do with the women's tag team titles, get rid of the titles and just make like a minor title. Like the Women's United States Championship or something. No, don't do this. You don't make sense. And then this leads to a fatal four match and Jackson Baszler wins. So technically, if I remember correctly, they beat the whole Raw roster. What are you going to do next? Are they going to come out on Friday and do the same thing? This was awful. Terrible. Headaches. Thank you for making sense. The concert that was next, though, that was really good. So Elias sings two songs from his new album. And it was really good. Like, he is really talented. And so he finishes, and he's like, you know, I never cared about the people anyway. And they're all booing, and it's like, oh, uh, and he's like, I know, I know, you want an encore. And, like, the groupie who took Eliza's guitar starts playing it, and Eliza's like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is no time to show off. What, who the hell do you think you are? And it reveals to be Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy goes to attack him with the guitar, and Eliza runs away. I'm excited for this feud. This is really going to be something, you know, Jeff swears, like, he wasn't the one to hit Elias with the car, so I don't know now that Seamus is on Raw, like, Seamus and Elias, maybe? Like, that's where this is going to lead? I mean, I know that, um, Hardy and Elias have a match on Sunday, but this is really good stuff, and we're paying off a long-term story, which we never do. Good job. This still doesn't make up for the last segment, though, but good going. Next, um, we have Miss TV. So, uh, well, not Miss TV, but um, backstage segment rather. So, the, they cut a promo saying how Mandy should be more grateful that now she's being taken seriously. She's in this serious tag team with Dana Brooke, and did he, like she shouldn't be complaining that like she separated from Otis. And he's so and the Miz is so excited to, when this lawsuit comes. Is so excited to win it from Otis. And Tucker comes and he's like, you know, you're a coward. You separated all of us from Otis. And I challenge you to do a tag team match tonight, and we have a new debut, guys. It's not like we just drafted superstars to Raw or anything, but okay. Um, Elias and challenges a party for a match at Hell in a Cell. It was confirmed, I think, at like 11 o'clock this morning. And oh, the new day on Raw. I've missed you. So, Woods and Kofi cut a promo saying after four years, they're finally back on Raw. They're finally back. And then, you know, Woods is starting to think of his whole year. And, you know, around this time is when he tore his Achilles. And then he finally comes back. He wins the tag titles. And, um, he gets separated from Big E. And then he goes into, like, his whole mental breakdown. And Kofi's like, just breathe, relax. It's fine. Like, we're on Raw. We're the tag titles. Like... It's okay. Seamus comes out and says, like, the send-off on Friday was super embarrassing to see them all crying. But Woods reminds him, like, hey, Biggie beat you. And Kobe's about to beat you right now. So what are you even trying to talk about? And, you know, they all chant, New Day rocks. Woo. Seamus goes to Kofi. Co um, Kofi wins. They showed Big E in the Thunderdome. This, was, this, again, was a really good match. I'm excited to see, like, with within a tag team division like what is next for the new day because um I don't even know what I'm doing my Hell in Cell predictions because I believe there's only four or five matches announced for the pay-per-view on Sunday uh so I'm excited to see what's next for them maybe Seamus grabs a partner uh maybe we're just gonna feud with Kofi individually but this was really good this was this is entertaining Ali then cut his promo from last week. If you remember, he got cut because of lack of time. And it's like low-key makes up with the retribution segment that happened earlier tonight. Ali says that he's been studying from home like all the company's tricks. That we could not learn how to make a buck off of the name Mustafa Ali. And he's ready to prove he's ready to prove that he belongs here. He was a hacker on SmackDown and he can make so much corruption. Only needs a laptop or a cell phone or anything else. And Retribution's really gonna change every way. This was a phenomenal promo. As we're gonna talk with the Miz next, like these promos were so intensified, and you could see like the heart and soul. Like they're so excited for this, and I'm excited for Retribution. And this promo, like I said, kind of made up, but you have to remember from a bigger picture, they lost in their debut. 
one of their bigger debuts, I should say. And that's kind of embarrassing. Um, Miz and Morrison come out next, and they said Tucker doesn't have a partner. And Elgato comes out. Elgato was, so it, this was actually pointed out to me on Twitter um, earlier. So if you remember, I think it was when Becky was feuding with Alexa Bliss, where like she disguised herself as that luchador. It was literally the same costume, minus like the blue shirt and tight that they used for Otis. So El Gordo comes out and like, you know, he starts like kind of speaking Spanish but not. And then The Miz, promo of the goddamn year here, where The Miz it just says like, oh, it's just such an embarrassment to the money in the bank. Like you don't understand, like you're making the money in the bank seem like such a joke, but it changes careers. I remember when I won the Money in the Bank previews, it literally changed my career because I went from someone that was kicked out of locker rooms and just like a reality star to someone that was taken seriously and main evented WrestleMania. And you're just making it seem like such a joke. And he just goes on to say like without the Money in the Bank briefcase, like he wouldn't be in the spot he's in and that he can't wait to take the Money in the Bank briefcase away from Otis and to take him seriously. This was such a good promo. Miz is so good at talking. Like, I swear, like, if I had to make a list of, like, my top promo talkers, Miz is up there. It's true. You know, I agree. Like, they have no direction for Otis. And my whole thing is, yes, I understand why you had Otis win. But if you had nothing for it, why waste it? Like, Baron Corbin was an obvious pick to win. Brian, you could have made something with Brian. I mean, this was approaching the Mysterio Rollins thing, so maybe not Mysterio. Um, Alistair Black, someone that was a obvious contender as well. And you gave it over and you don't even have a plan. So, I don't know what's next for this, but, um, Kodos and the Miz, amazing promo. Um, Tucker and Elgato obviously beat... Miz and Morrison, half of the match, the 21st round championship makes an appearance, so like Lucha House Party and Gulak and Zab was like halfway through the match and like that's what distracted the Miz. Okay. If this is leading to Elgato being on Monday and I notice being on Friday, I swear to God, like, don't do that. You should have just kept them together, but whatever. Um, so then... Woods and Kingston, they're congratulating Tucker and Elgato on beating the Miz and Morrison. And so Manny delivers a ham and they're all like, El God, do rocks. El God, do rocks. I don't have, I don't even have words. Um, so Mercer the Buzzer eats him for the 15th million time. Alexa Bliss comes out and says, our fun has only just begun. Um, this is literally money. I love them together. I think this was literally the best thing and the best choice. I'm so excited to see what's next. I'm really hoping this, this is really far-fetched, <laughs> but I'm really hoping that at one point, um, The Fiend takes the World Heavyweight Championship off of Drew. Bliss takes the, War the Roman Championship off of Asuka and they dominate the whole show. That is probably not going to happen. Again, it's far-fetched, but that would be something interesting. Um, so then this stupidity of a match between Braun Strowman and Keith Lee, what the hell are you doing? I have a lot of problems with this. So one, um, as we're gonna get into with the Randy Orton promo as well, there was only, when this match started, I believe there was only like 18 minutes left of Raw. So that was already, like, a problem. I believe it was the Elgato-Tucker thing that went over time, but I could be wrong. And this match lasted, I believe it was four to five minutes. Did, have we mentioned that Keith Lee has only gotten X amount of, like, serious wins on Raw? One! What are you doing? Oh my god, this was so dumb. Because then, like... Strowman did a low blow, but not a low blow, and then Lee attacked Strowman and said like, Oh, you use cheap shots, we don't use cheap shots around here. This was so dumb. What? Uh, please, please, please. Push Lee to the moon. What are you doing? This is dumb. And then for our five minute promo segment, 
Um, so Randy goes and he talks about the legendary moments inside the Hell in a Cell. He, you know, thinks that being in the structure reminds him of like all those legendary matches, John Cena, The Undertaker, and every other, I can't remember them all off the top of my head, but all the others. Um, it reminds him of all the Hall of Famers he's been beaten down. He's gonna do the same thing to Drew. And like I said, we are really cutting on time here. Drew comes out, grabs bow cutters, cuts the chain, and runs. Okay. Um, so obviously the ending was rushed. I thought this episode of Raw was really sloppy. I feel like they have no direction of what they're doing. I felt like the SmackDown show was way cleaner. Um, so I, I have no idea. I don't know what the plan is. I don't know. Like, like I said, we have four to five matches for Sunday. So I don't even know. Do I wait till Sunday morning? Do my predictions? <laughs> so yeah, um, let me know in the comments your take on Raw. I did not like it, but I'm usually wrong. So make sure to like this video, comment what you liked, what you didn't like. Hit that bell for notifications. Please subscribe. I will see you. So this episode will, I believe, be uploaded Wednesday morning. So I will see you tomorrow for AEW Dynamite review. I will then, I depending on the match, I guess, number, you may see me either Friday, Saturday, or Sunday with um, the Hell in a Cell matches and then, well, Hell in a Cell predictions. And then Monday, next Monday, for our... Hell in a Summer Review Show. Thank you for joining in for this episode of Community Talks Wrestling. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Community underscore WWE. I was live tweeting yesterday. And on Instagram at Community Talks Wrestling. Peace out, my dudes. See you next time.